Please be seated. Let's reflect about this Bible passage, especially from the first reading, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. God is giving them strict warning. And God says, you have to understand the statutes and norms and rules and regulations and commandments which I have given you. And you have to follow it uh, straightforward. You have to follow it sincerely. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 8 onwards. Let's read this word of God. And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances? As just as this entire law that I'm setting before you today. As just as this entire law that I'm setting before you today. And verse 9 we read like this. But take care. But take care. And watch yourselves closely. And watch yourself closely. So as neither to forget the things so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen that your eyes have seen not to let them slip from your mind not to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life all the days of your life the Lord is strictly telling his children his people there are so many things that I have done in your lives don't ever forget these things it should never be forgotten and you have seen you have witnessed the miracles and wonders and interventions of God it should not be forgotten it should not be slipped from your mind all the days of your life, the Lord says. And not only that, make them known to your children and your children's children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are leading a family life, the greatest responsibility that you have is not giving your children food. Of course, you have to give them food, which you will give for sure. But more than that, there is a great responsibility that every parent has is to hand over your faith, to G the faith in Jesus Christ. Every information about Jesus, everything that you have experienced about Jesus and everything that you have known and heard and understood from Jesus and the Bible, you have to hand it over to your children. Then your children will never depart from you. You know, I have seen so many families where the parents were so particular in giving their children the education, spiritual education, they taught their children the values of Jesus Christ, the teachings and commandments and teachings of the church and teachings of the Lord. They educated their children and have seen them. These children are protected. When I say this, I, I'm not telling you that your children will never go away. I have seen so many children whose parents were so prayerful and holy and connected to God and teaching their children very well about Jesus and about the Bible. But still, they went away from God. They went into addictions, drinking, bad habits, wrong relationship, addict, all these kind of things. But one thing is sure, today or tomorrow, they will come back to the Lord. Because this is what happens. You know, just imagine the prodigal son. When the prodigal son had left the home and went to a distant country and squandered everything in dissolute living and lost all the properties that was given by his father and spent everything wasted for his friends and at the end he ended up in the pigsty and there was nobody to take care of him. And when he was in the pigsty, we read in the Bible, he remembered his father and came back to his father because he knew his father is loving. He knew there is peace and happiness and joy in his family. He knew it is, his father has taught him very many value system. And therefore he was missing that value system and therefore he came back to his father. Suppose if his father was a torturous father. Suppose if his father was a terrible father. Suppose he had negative experiences from his house. Would he ever think of getting out of the pigsty and come back to, the, to his house? But instead he would have thought of committing suicide from the pigsty. He would never come back. But he has very good memories about his father and his house and therefore he came back. That is how every child, if you, if you gave your children the proper education about Jesus, the teachings, the, the miracles Jesus did in your life, you shared with your children, your God experiences that you have, you share with your children. You encourage your children to focus on Jesus more. And you always depend on Jesus in your difficult moments. And you encourage your children to depend on Jesus in their difficult moments. Surely, even though, even though, sometimes even if your children have gone away from God, still they will come back. One day they will return to you. 
Praise the Lord. Praise I've the seen Lord. so many people who have repented and come back to the Lord. When we speak to them, how is it for the first time you experience Jesus? Is it the first time that you are coming back to Jesus? They all, most of the cases, most of the incidents I've seen them, they were brought up in faith. They were brought up somehow, maybe by their parents, maybe not by their parents, but by the teachers, maybe by their best friends. Somehow they were introduced to Jesus. Somehow they are connected to Jesus. Somehow they knew who Jesus is. But somewhere in the course of time, they lost the connection with Jesus and went into wrong relationship and addictions. But now they are coming back to the Lord. So this happens. So therefore, don't ever reject the spiritual education, the knowledge about Jesus to your children. Even if they miss anything, this should not be missed. You should give this education about Jesus, teaching about Jesus, love of Jesus, and stories of Jesus, incidents of Jesus, explain about Jesus, and all what did Jesus do for you and did for you. Tomorrow, when they are completely gone away from God, when they are in big crisis, in big trouble and big problem, they will come back to the Lord. When they are in addictions and wrong relationship, they will think of Jesus and come back to God. Because they will remember their father and mother who introduced Jesus to them and say, let me try, let me call out Jesus and they will come back to Jesus. There is a beautiful passage in the Bible. You know, when Jesus was crucified, when Jesus was dying on the cross, there were two thieves on both sides. Two thieves on both sides. And, you know, we have all heard many things about these two thieves. One thief was very terrible. He was totally against Jesus. Another thief was good. Now we need to understand, both of them are thieves. Both of them committed sin. But there is a background. Both of them have got a background. From that Bible passage, we know who is having a good background, who is having a bad background. Gospel Luke chapter 23 verse 39 onwards, we read like this. Luke chapter 23 verse 39 onwards, we read. One of the criminals, so both of them are called criminals, and one of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. So one thief, he started abusing Jesus. He said, Are you not the Messiah? So everybody said, You are the Messiah. Then if you are the Messiah, save ourselves, save yourself and us. So then he started making fun of Jesus. That means he knew Messiah. I mean, he heard about Messiah, but he only wants his salvation, his help. And he is not bothered about loving the Messiah. He is not showing, he doesn't understand the suffering Messiah. He only wants a miracle working Messiah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is a problem of this thief. He only sees Jesus as a miracle worker Messiah. Messiah who works, works miracles and delivers him and delivers both of them. That is his idea about Messiah. But what happens to the another thief? But the other rebuked him saying, the other one said, keep quiet. Do you not fear God? See, he's hanged, he's crucified. But being hanging on the cross, he said, do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, you are also condemned. Just like he's condemned, you are also condemned. This is what the good thief says. And then he says, verse 41, he says, we, and we indeed have been condemned justly. He says, you know, he is repenting about his mistake. He accepts his mistake. He admits that he's wrong. He says, we did wrong and we are condemned justly. For we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. He accepts his mistake. He is a man of repentance. He sincerely repented about his sin. And then he says, but this man has done nothing wrong. Remember, a thief is proclaiming from the cross that Jesus is innocent. When the all high priest and priest and Sanhedrin and Pilate hear it, everybody, they all said Cru crucify him and he is a criminal and they all crucified him. But from the cross, this thief says he is innocent. That means this good thief knew who Jesus is. 
this good thief he has a basic education about jesus and about faith and about bible about messiah he he is coming from a family where there is basic education is given to him somewhere he lost the connection to god somewhere he went into wrong things and committed criminal activities but now he is repenting in this last moment of his life when he experienced god's presence in front of him he repented and came back to salvation there are so many people like this just because somewhere sometime in their life they had an experience of god they knew who jesus they read the bible they had a connection with jesus they learned it from their family and they always believed and prayed and went to the church and they are connected to jesus they had an experience of god such kinds of people will come back one day for sure because that is what jesus said what is what that is what we read in deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9 teach your children and children's children all what you heard all what you have seen teach them teach them make them known to your children and your children's children not because it it has to be spread but because your children will be safe even though they fall into sin even though they fall away from god but one day they will come back let's go back to this passage gospel luke chapter 23 verse 30 uh, 42 then he said jesus and this this good thief and after this this good thief told jesus he corrected the other thief and said don't you fear god we have been condemned justice justly we are getting what we deserve for our deeds but this man has done nothing wrong this man has done nothing wrong he is proclaimed against the pilot against the chief priest against all the people who condemned jesus and crucified he this thief is declaring publicly from the cross this man has done nothing wrong that means this thief was a good thief though he committed criminal activities and he is accepting that mistake and accepting that punishment but basically he is a man of god in basically he is connected to god basically he knows bible basically he knows who jesus is basically he know he knows who jesus is and what is his purpose and why he is suffering on this cross the meaning of suffering he knows but the other thief he doesn't understand the meaning of suffering he wants miracle from the cross but the good thief he knows what is the meaning of suffering today you can see two types of christians who only wants miracles and wonders they don't understand the meaning of suffering they are that bad thief but there are so many christians who understand the pain of suffering they don't they know the meaning of the cross they know the meaning of the suffering on mount calvary and they only they don't want miracles they only want eternal life they say what did this good thief say he didn't say jesus you are the healer you are the messiah you please help us you help everyone let's come down from the cross he did not say this he knew the bible he knew the truth therefore he said jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom praise the lord, praise the lord. he is only worried about eternal life so his focus is only on eternal life but the other thief his his focus is only this world everyone who search for miracles and wonders are focused on this world but everyone who search for the kingdom of god they are focused on the other world they are in, they are the real cr- true christians then he said jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and verse 43 we read like this then jesus replied remember there are two thieves one thief is accusing jesus another thief is justifying jesus one thief is asking for miracle another thief is only asking for eternal life one thief is asking for long life another one is asking for eternal life and then jesus only spoke to the good thief it is so surprising that jesus did not even respond to the other thief though he was standing next to him jesus only spoke to the good thief and said truly i tell you today you will be in with me in the paradise today truly i tell you you will be with me but what about the other thief his life all throughout his life he was a mysterious i mean a, a criminal act a, a criminal he, he was committing terrible sin and therefore in the last moment though he got a chance to repent even though god himself was in front of him he could not save himself he could not repent he could not save his life he could if he had just said one sentence lord remember me when you come in the kingdom okay the good thief said lord remember me when you come in the kingdom at least then the other thief could have said lord remember me also just one sentence enough remember me also 
that would have saved him but he could not open his mouth this is what happens all those who are leading an evil life all throughout your life and if you are expecting a total deliverance and transformation at the last moment of your life it is impossible if if a tree is leaning towards this side it will never when it falls down it will never fall this way it will only fall this way if your life is always leaning towards evil at the last moment even if jesus himself is standing next to you you will not be falling this way you will only fall this way this is exactly what i've been there are many people who say father now let me enjoy after some years well go for a retreat and change my life you will never change if you are not ready to change now you will never change anywhere if not now then never praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus praise to jesus praise to jesus so my dear brothers and sisters let's examine our conscience and see do we have this true repentance and true knowledge about jesus and are we ready to share this message of jesus christ to our children and children's children are we sharing the gospel message to our family members are we giving them an experience of love of jesus so that they will never be lost